All right. Uh, once again, hello to YouTube and uh, another hearty greetings to my fellow hamsters. Uh, second installment regarding the uh, Belfang uh, UV5R. One thing that I've already discovered about this little radio, um, if you didn't already buy the programming cable, beg, borrow, steal, or go buy one. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, not that you have to have a degree in rocket science to work your way through the menu, because some of it you really don't. Some of it's rather straightforward. Uh, some of it not quite so much as compared to, say, the ICOMs, the ASUS, and what have you, that tend to be uh, a little more well thought out. Okay. Uh, get your cable. You'll, you'll thank me for it. Or you'll thank somebody for it. Anyway, get a cable. Long story short. <clears throat> Radio is now charged. It's programmed. Channel mode. A um, couple of neat features like you tend to see with some of these radios coming from across the pond here. A little built-in flashlight. Yeah, that's cute and all. Uh, FM radio. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> and there's an alarm. Uh, Alright, well, let's just show you what it does. Really? And of course, your alarm is dependent upon how loud the volume of the pot is here. So. Alright, so it has one of those. Okay, yeah, nifty. Now. Let's turn this off. The programming cable package comes with a little small little mini disc. You saw this in the first video. Your driver's on there. Instructions on how to load that driver are on the disc, so I won't bore you with all of that. Uh, you're smart enough to figure it out. So anyway, get your cable plugged in, get your driver installed. Now, let's see here. Need two hands for this. Oh, before I do that, one thing you're going to need to know is uh, what COM port. So I'm running Windows XP. You know, typical right-click my computer properties. Uh, hardware, device manager. All right, ignore the things that I haven't bothered to load drivers for here. Under ports, prolific USB to serial bridge. On my machine, this is COM3. So I like to say under your ports, find the pro prolific USB to serial bridge and note the COM port number. You're going to need that. All right, now. Here is the BF5R software. Um, not very stellar as far as the user interface goes, but that's okay. We'll close that out. And you go up here. Well, actually, wait. Time to plug in the cable. So, open up ye little door. Plug in cable. Come on, cable. Get in there. Turn on radio. All right. Now, what you want to do is you'll want to go to communications first off. Click, pick your COM port. Remember, COM3 for me, so click COM3, confirm. All right. Program, read from radio. You get this little dialog box here. What I've noticed, the most of the time, the first time I go to read, it fails. Just like that. Well, that's okay. That somehow tends to wake up the radio. Click OK. Hit read again. It's going to read all the data blocks.
Okay, block's red. Once that's done, you can actually close that, and you can close this. You don't need that dialog box anymore. Back up to Edit, Channel Information. All right, and there's everything that I have programmed inside. And so you would edit this table appropriately. If you wanted to add another frequency here, click, drop down, VHF, UHF, etc., so forth and so on. Key in your receive frequency, and then key in the appropriate offset. So, you know, like for instance up here, 146.97 receive, well, negative 6 offset, so the input 146.37. You have to key both of those in by hand. Set your uh, CTCSS appropriately, transmit power level, wide narrow, uh, push to talk ID, you don't need to worry about, busy lock, don't worry about, scan, add. If it's on or off, if you hit scan, you know, it's either in the list or it's not. You can put a channel name here if you want. And uh, once you have all your frequencies in there, hit close. It's already been written to the radio. But we'll write it again just so you can see it. So program write to radio and write. And off it goes. Writing data to the radio. The light will flash green when writing. It'll flash red when reading. Okay, here we go. Complete writing parameters and transceiver. Okay, okay. Click. Turn the radio off. And pull out the cable. Close the door. And start the little guy. Now in channel mode. And go, go, go. <laughs> there they all are. Go, one. Not sure how well this little camera's picking go, this up. I think I'll be turning the little lady off here soon. <clears throat> now, if you do this by hand, like I said, what you can do and you key in the appropriate offset, it will show up in the display either plus or minus. If you use the programming software to do this, once it's done you get plus and minus. Apparently it's just the way that that works. But the data is in there correctly. And let's see here, let me find one of the local boxes. That's not the one I want. Two, zero, one, 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 nine, seven, five, four, three, two, one. 146.97. Okay, here we go. Uh, on low power, hopefully I'll get out here. A, E, 5, and W. And there's a little bit of hash in here. I'm right next to the computers. No big deal. I'll pick them up on my little icon also. Uh, first impressions, the little radio has done very well so far. Of course, I haven't had it a full day yet. But the fit and finish <laughs> is quite good. The radio feels solid. Um, it doesn't feel flimsy. The... Uh, even the on-off volume switch here has a nice feel to it. Uh, all the keypads have a nice solid click and good feedback. Um, it, it just doesn't feel cheap, even though it is cheap in price. Now, whether or not this radio has uh, longevity as compared to, say, the Icon here, um, who knows? Uh, we'll find out. But anyway, I'm liking it so far, and I've been playing with uh, both sides, VHF and UHF both, and it's done well. 
Anyway, at this point, uh, there's nothing else to say without just boring you to tears. So I'm out of here. Have a good one. A E5 and W.